Hello friends, trying extremely hard not to get demonetized in this video, bringing you another Dota 2 video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the three most annoying things that you can do before the five minute mark to tilt your enemies and hopefully get them to rage quit. The first clip that I want to show you is basically three minutes or so of absolutely beautiful gameplay from Puppy, where essentially he just wins his team the game in the first few minutes of the game as a position five, which is incredibly impressive. So the very first thing that he does is he is chilling over towards his offlane bounty rune. So this is usually the rune that's free for your team. Why is he taking this, you might wonder? Because he doesn't want to show. He's a position five enchantress and he's playing towards this bottom lane, but he's not supposed to be there. The enemy team is of course expecting him as a position five to be in the safe lane. So that's why he took that bounty. He didn't want to show his position. And as a result, he's able to run over here with a ward in boots and place the ward. What is the purpose of this ward, you might be wondering? The purpose of this ward is to snipe couriers. Now, the beauty of this ward as a courier Courier sniping ward is that, of course, sniping couriers is incredibly valuable. I mean, especially when you look at the amount of gold that is available on the map, everything got nerfed. Couriers, they remain the same. You still get the same amount of gold from couriers, so it's actually a much better source of gold than it was before relative to the total amount of gold that you can get. So with that being said, sniping couriers is great. Everybody knows how to do it. Usually where people place a ward to snipe a courier is right here, or maybe they'll put one even more obvious and they'll put it right here. But Puppy realizes that the level 1 to 4 couriers are extremely slow. As long as you get a glimpse of vision of them, you are going to be able to snipe them. So as long as this ward doesn't get dewarded, then this safe lane has to constantly be worried about their couriers getting sniped, which is incredibly valuable because Dota is all about regen in the laning stage and you need couriers to send regen. Okay, so what does Puppy do after this? He walks over, still not showing himself on the outpost, and he stands in the trees making sure that if the Lich is going over to pull or check his pull, he's not going to get scouted, and then he walks out and kills the courier. That, of course, he saw with the vision. Now, he doesn't just go for a courier snipe. Here's where we get to the second thing that is incredibly annoying that you can do in any game, and I want to take a look at exactly why this works. So he goes for a first blood. Of course, they end up killing the Lich quite easily. He is playing against two slows and a stun. He dies. Now, why does this work? Look at where Matumba Man's lane is. If you are a position five support and you're playing in the safe lane, then your carry doesn't really need you there for the first few waves. Why? Because the wave is directly in front of the tower. So really all you're doing is soaking experience. So by being down here, not only is Puppy able to snipe a courier, set up a very beautiful courier sniping ward so Yapsor can snipe future couriers, which by the way, he snipes like three or four of them. He's also not soaking experience from Matumba Man. So Matumba Man's going to get absolutely huge up here and Puppy can just go top whenever Matumba Man says, hey, I need your help. Or if you're in a pub and your teammates aren't really communicating, you can just look to see when the wave is pushed out as a support and then TP back to your lane and do regular supporting. So what does Puppy do next? Once again, I said he, it's a few minutes of really beautiful Dota, so it's not over yet. He goes into the enemy jungle, and he starts just jungling. Now, why is he doing this? This is crazy. You shouldn't jungle in Dota, but this isn't just any jungle. This is the pull that the enemy team is supposed to be working with. So by jungling these camps, he is preventing Lich from coming over here and pulling, which means this lane is even more one. And if we look back towards the top lane, Matumpa Man still doesn't need help, so this is still fine. Jungle's the easy camp, because that's the very first thing that Lich is, of course, going to be pulling. Uh, and then he walks over and grabs the hard camp Seder after killing the little blue Seder. And the reason that this gank is so cool is because not only is, is he going to try to go for another kill, this entire time, he's just been preventing the Lich from pulling, but without getting spotted. So they don't know he's here still. They have no idea where he is. And as a result of this, Puppy is able to be very patient, wait for an opportunity, and they get another kill on the carry. In two minutes, Puppy was able to stop pulls. He was able to jungle some camps. He was able to give Matumba Man solo experience on the top lane, who's now level three in absolutely god mode, and put down this ward, which is scouting all of these couriers coming by. 
This is absolutely ridiculous. At this point, he goes mid. I believe the call at this point is probably Matumba Man's like, hey, I'm fine top. Uh, the Rubik actually left. I'm just soloing against a Mars. I don't need help. So there's no reason for Puppy to go top and soak experience in a lane that, of course, Lone Druid's already going to beat a Mars solo. So Puppy doesn't need to be there. He can just play between mid and bot. And like I said, Yapsor gets a courier snipe because... Look at where this ward is. I believe that at a certain point, the Lich did try to deward the ward behind the tower. But look, they don't get it. Two centuries and they don't get the ward because it's up here. Who would expect a ward to be where this one is? Nobody's going to expect that. And of course, on this side, you can do the exact same thing over here. This was mind-blowing when I saw this. I've never seen this before, surprisingly, even in a patch where couriers are worth so much. So basically, moral of the story, snipe couriers with a ward on a high ground, specifically this position would be pretty nice, steal the enemy team's pull camps. That's always really great. I'll show you another replay where you can do that. And also start in the opposite lane that the enemy team isn't expecting and give your core solo experience for the first wave. In particular, when you are a safe lane support because that first equilibrium is of course going to be directly in front of the tower, which means your, your core won't really need any help. At this point, you might be wondering, Jenkins, how in the ketchup and mustard covered chicken balls am I gonna do this on a hero that's not Enchantress? Well, honestly, all of these things are applicable in some way to any hero. You just have to be creative with it. So let's take a look at this Earthshaker who is doing a kind of similar thing at level one in terms of uh, instead of killing the enemy easy camp, he grabs up that second wave, which is a very common tactic when you don't want to play the first couple of minutes of the laning stage. And instead of just grabbing the wave and running with it back to his tower, he stands there and blocks the easy camp. So this treant doesn't have any pull to work with because that's the way that the treant is going to get the lane equilibrium back. Uh, in fact, he even extends this and pulls the third wave as well, pulling the entirety of the creep wave, uh, the double creep wave that is, to the between the tier 1 and tier 2 where he's going to de deny a bunch of waves. And uh, really the important part here is just that you can see that in this situation, Earthshaker was able to body block the camp with a creep wave. Uh, if you're Marana, you can kill the creeps by arrowing them. Uh, if you're any other support that can't kill the creeps easily, you just body block the camp. Uh, in any case, what you are really trying to achieve here is just not allowing the enemy team to utilize that easy camp. And it just happens to be a little bit more annoying if you can uh, kill the easy camp as well, because then you're going to farm it, which gets you a little bit of extra gold and experience. Hello! Do you like hours of coaching sessions, hero tier list videos, and Diet Pepsi related shenanigans? Neither do I, so I won't go over to patreon.com slash Jenkins Dota and support my favorite video game enthusiast in their journey to make the best video game videos that the video game video industry has ever seen. That's it for this video, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in another video game video.